everybody, Lomi here, and I'm coming in today with a May update. It's going to be kind of a studio vlog today, just sharing what I've been working on and the things that I hope to get done in the next couple weeks. First off, I've got Invesi, my soul doll Paratisi, who has been disassembled, and she is just a spooky head again because I unstrung her body and I have it in a pot to be wet sanded now that my sandpaper is finally here. Uh, so I can finally give it the last finishing touch that I wanted to do with the 600 grit sandpaper. When you wet sand with 600 grit, it gives a really nice velvety finish that's not too shiny, but it doesn't have any remaining visible marks. So it should be a great finish for this doll. And then she can finally be put together and I can make her an outfit and she will be done. So even though I haven't gotten to the sanding part yet, the fact that I have the pieces ready for sanding that makes a, a big difference and it's really encouraging to know that I can pick this up and get started at any time. Uh, last week I shared a video about finishing this pattern or making some adjustments to it. I made a few more changes such as changing the shape of the sleeves a little bit more just to make it easier to get the hands through and also to make it fit really nicely when the doll is moving. And I also simplified the neckline by eliminating the back part of the yoke, making the back one solid piece, and then the yoke will just be one piece in the front and the collar that goes around front and back. So that should make it a lot easier to sew. It's quite a few pieces, and I'm going to be picking out fabrics for this today. I already kind of know what I'm going to be using. I just have to pull it out of my fabric shelf back here. I know I've shared glimpses of my shelf before, but it's pretty packed, and I think what I'm going to use is this gold that's back here, and this is going to be the collar and the yoke. The rest is going to be green. I don't know that I have enough of this one. Although I think those colors would be pretty together, but this is not a very big piece and it's going to take quite a bit of fabric to make that pattern. Over here, I have what I've been thinking of using. This is actually a dress that a friend sent me specifically to use for doll clothes. It was a dress that she wore for another friend's wedding. And that was quite a few years ago, but let me flip the camera around and I'll hold this up so you can see it. So this is the dress, which should be more than enough material for a doll gown. It's a really pretty deep forest green crepe satin, so it's really textured on the back, but it has a really pretty grain to it. It's a little wrinkled, so I'm not sure if you can see it. There we go. It's just like a really pretty texture that I've always liked the way this looks for doll clothing. It makes it a little bit more delicate than if you just use like a regular costume satin. Uh, now that I have the two colors together, I think that this is too cool of a color to pair with this yellow because uh, this is like a really bright crisp gold. And I think I'm going to need something that's a little bit deeper, so I'm probably going to dig in some of these bins of scrap fabric back here in a second, see what I can find. Alternatively, if I want to go really shiny, I do have a piece of like a gold lame that would probably work okay for the collar. So these bins back here, and ignore Vaughn being very flamboyantly naked, uh, this is where I store all of my extra fabric scraps. After I have projects that I finish and I have usable scraps at the end, it looks like there's a nice gold here, but there's not very much. I think this would probably work really nicely. Let's see. Yeah, that's a much better combination. So I'm going to keep that aside and hopefully I'll be able to find some more pieces of this. If not, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough for me to work with. Maybe if I get really... Ooh. Maybe if I get creative in cutting. Okay, so this is kind of the moment of truth. I've got my pattern pieces. I'm 
wheel. Need two of this one. I can do a different color of lining if I really have to. I would prefer not to, but if I do really careful position here, this might be just enough. Flip it there, and then this will give me one, two, three. I can probably do four. Ooh, that is cutting it close, but I think it's gonna work, which is good because I have nowhere to get fabric right now. Another project that I recently did was a really small thing, and that was I made Rand's pendant, which, see if y'all focus, maybe, maybe not. It's not going to, but. That's alright because I actually filmed the making process and I'm going to show you that while I talk about it a little bit because I think that's more interesting than me just sitting here and blathering on about it. I got this stone for it all the way back in October when there was a bead and gemstone show. If you did not read the first book in Rune and For All's story, which went out in March, then you don't know who Ran is, so I apologize, but he is another mage from the temple where For All studies, and I've had several people ask if I intend to do anything with that character as far as making a doll, and even though I've made the necklace, the answer is no, because for one, probably the biggest reason, I don't have the budget for it. And uh, I don't think I need to be taking on any more doll projects when I have so many things unfinished. And I was thinking that while I have Rune disassembled to work on his modifications, I just have this human body floating around with nothing to put on top to make a finished doll. So I figured maybe if I got creative, I could do a couple photo stories that imply the character's presence using Rune's body. That is such a weird thing to talk about, but that's this hobby, I guess. Since I mentioned the book thing, I'll go ahead and talk about that a little bit. Uh, that's one of the things that's keeping me from really getting to a lot of the doll projects right now, because all the way back in January, I set the release date for the second book in my series as May 30th. And back when I set the date, there was nothing that could possibly keep me from hitting that. And then everything went crazy. And as a result, I'm scrambling to try to get everything done for this release date that is coming up so quickly. And I've been working on doing things like making the pre-order bonuses that are going to go out with the pre-ordered paperbacks, which that includes bookmarks and stickers like I did before, but I'm flipping it around so you get the other character and the other cover as a bookmark this time. So. That's kind of neat, but kind of different. Saves me a little bit of time, hopefully. I'm really close to getting things done, but my timeline is also really tight. As I'm filming this right now, I have nine days left to get the book finished and submitted for printing, and I'm still waiting for the proofs to arrive because I have no idea what the interior is going to look like. It's really stressful, and I'm trying so hard to get it done, and that's been sucking up a lot of my energy because I was really supposed to have two whole months where I would have nothing to do but make videos and finish the final edits on this book. Instead, the book ended up being late because my editor got sick. Not with the virus, fortunately, but that did leave me with a lot less time to finish things. Unfortunately, once you have a release date set, you can't cancel it or else you get penalized by Amazon and you lose your ability to do pre-orders for at least a year. So the process of making the pre-order bonuses is something that I've been busy with too. I make my bookmarks and stickers at home. I have the stuff for it here, so I might as well. Also, I had previously asked a local print shop what it would cost to get bookmarks made, and they never got back to me. I'm assuming that they're closed now, so doing it myself is really the only option that I have, but I try to make them as nice as possible. I print them on a really nice heavyweight cardstock, and then I hand cut all of them, and they're also laminated because I want them to be a little bit more sturdy. 
Because the edges are cut, the lamination will eventually peel off, but hopefully that'll still leave the bookmark usable. It'll just be not waterproof anymore. But one trick that I've discovered to making the laminated bookmarks more durable is first you laminate the sheet, and then you cut the individual bookmarks apart, and then you put them back through the laminator because that creates a much better seal to the paper and it presses down the edges nice and firm. So that's what I've been doing. It takes a while, but I think the end result looks really nice. I also printed out and framed the artwork that I did for the second book. Ooh, you can see my umbrella lights. So there, that's the second book's cover, which this is the artwork that I used for the bookmarks that I sent out with the first book. Uh, I haven't started the cover art for the third book yet, which is a little bit worrisome, but fortunately the release date for that one is not set in stone yet, so I don't have quite as much to worry about. Uh, I do want to do some sticker artwork for that book release as well, so I'm going to have to get cracking. I need to decide what characters I'm going to use for the stickers for each book because I'd already done the chibis of Rune and For All, so that was a no-brainer. But from book three onward, I don't know what to do. I buy my sticker paper from online labels. I really like it. I find that it's a good quality. They're also really fade resistant, even though I just use dye ink, which is what my Epson printer uses. Um, I'm not sure if I've ever discussed the printer that I use or anything because it doesn't really come up in doll related projects, but I use an Epson EcoTank 7750 which is the wide format all-in-one tank printer. The benefit of using pigment ink over dye ink is that the pigment inks tend to be a little bit more fade resistant. So if you're going to be printing something that's exposed to a lot of sunlight, it's better to have the pigments because they will last longer. But modern dye ink is very fade resistant, and a lot of the modern Epson inks have been tested and rated for like a hundred year longevity, which is a lot more than what's necessary for things like stickers. But now that I've talked about the papers and the printer, I guess it's also worth mentioning that I cut my stickers using a Silhouette Cameo 3, and these are cut files that I designed myself, and that's like the most boring part of the explanation, but if you have any questions about the sticker making process, I can always answer that. It doesn't really tie into the doll making, but it's a fun little thing that's on the side, so I do a lot of experimentation with it. While I was cleaning in my studio's closet, I came across a couple sheets of gray craft foam that I had gotten probably last summer. I don't remember what exactly for, but they were in a bag with some other summer projects that I never got around to doing. And this is going to end up being the template for Vaughn's armor. And I'm really looking forward to doing this. I'm going to be using some cosplay methods to try to turn this into armor. It's going to be kind of floppy and flexible because this is just like the really thin uh, two millimeter craft foam, really lightweight but I figure I can always apply some kind of hardener like Bondo putty or something like that if I end up getting something that I really like that won't work in just craft foam. It's also possible that I can double this up and then it'll be a lot more rigid, so that's an option. Hopefully this will be enough if he does not wear like a full suit of armor because I like fantasy style stuff and I'm sure in the book he probably would wear full plate armor, but I'm not making full plate armor for a doll. Unfortunately, that's all I've gotten done in the studio this week. Right now, at time of filming, we are halfway through May, so hopefully I'll have some of these things wrapped up by the end of the month. Next week, I'm going to be sewing the dress that I shared the pattern for, and I'm looking forward to sharing that tutorial because I really like how that dress ended up turning out. I won't have any material to do the sash since I just have that tiny little piece of gold satin, but hopefully that's something that I'll be able to follow up with, and I'm actually thinking of doing a handful of patterns for things like belts and sashes because 
I use them for a lot of patterns, but in the past I've always just cut out or like a random rectangle of fabric and sewn that together, but I think it would really benefit if I had actual sashes made for different sizes of dolls. Some that you can tie and then some that would close with snaps so they would be put together in a different way that would make them lay a little bit more smoothly. If you have any size requests for me to cover while I'm doing that, let me know because I can go from the itty bitty ones like Lulu here all the way up to the big guys like Vaughn. So he's got sashes too. I think Rune's the only one who doesn't. That's it for this little update though. It's just a little something to show you that I'm alive and I've been working on things even if everything is going slower than expected. Right now it is really hot up here in my studio so I'm gonna wait to work until things cool down. It's 85 degrees in here and I'm gonna go downstairs and play some Animal Crossing because forever alone. But yeah, that's it for this time. Thanks for joining me again, and I'll check back soon with another tutorial. Bye. <laughs> Bye.